Welcome to yesterday's NBA news from the 31st of July. We're now officially into August, which is kind of crazy, but it is what it is. Uh, we had some obviously uh, Olympics games. Uh, we had some extensions, so let's talk about those first. As Jared Allen is signing a three-year uh, $91 million extension with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Essentially $30 million per year for Jared Allen, which I think is a really great deal. Uh, for the Cavs, uh, obviously an anchor to a top 5 defense, a really good all-around player, I would say offensively he's a little underrated, the only bad thing for Jared Allen has been the health sometimes, which to be fair has been for all of the stars on Cleveland in a way, <laughs> and I think this is a really great deal for the Cavaliers, uh, yeah, Jared Allen is a really great player, one of the top 10 big men in the league, you could say he's one of the... Uh, top traditional big man in a way I guess you could say but he's certainly one of the most valuable big men in the league and I love Jared Allen I would have loved to have him on the Warriors but it is what it is Cleveland essentially all their offseason has been extensions the question is Isaac Okoro still who you know the sign and trade speculations have been there I'm pretty sure I, re I talked about it that uh, the sign and trade for Isaac Okoro could be with the Nets. Obviously, the Nets have Dorian Finney Smith and Cam Johnson, who are uh, valuable entities here in the market. And we'll see how that all works out for Cleveland. But they did what they were supposed to do. They extended their guys. And now the question is can they make some more marginal moves uh, that can make them even better for this upcoming season? Uh, Luke Kennard is signing a one year, $11 million deal with the Grizzlies. Obviously, resigning that in a way. Uh, or resigning there because he was there last season, he had a really good year, and I mean as a shooter next to Ja Morant and next to all these, you know, guys should be really great. Uh, ja should be back, right, Desmond Bain should be healthy, Jared, Jared Jackson should be healthier, uh, he's still, hey, rebound man, just rebound. Uh, they have like Edie now, and I think Memphis obviously is very due for a bounce back season, and that'll be really fun to watch. Uh, with Ja of course coming in with the revenge mindset in a way and he's supposedly very locked in and ready to take the league by storm again then we had Olympics day 5 the women's tournament continued with Spain beating Puerto Rico 63-62 really tight game that I could not watch at all uh, <laughs> because I was uh, well I had to go for my medicine uh, because I've been feeling a little under the weather so yeah, I just didn't catch much of this game, uh, or pretty much nothing un 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 other than highlights, so I can't really give you my expertise. And then I watched about a half of China against Serbia, uh, where it was fairly close, but yeah, Serbia, uh, I mean, fuck, I had this, I have this, of course, very, very wrong. Uh, Serbia beat China. Uh, uh, Serbia defeats China 81 to 59. First half was pretty close, but uh, China just could not hit from the three point line. They were 8 of 34, and when you compare it to Serbia, that was 7 of 11 from the three point line. It's kind of crazy. So, Serbia gets a good win. Let, let's enter the, let's talk about the men's side. Uh, Serbia beat Puerto Rico 107-66. Pretty much over after the first quarter. Puerto Rico did try, but. Uh, the size was just incredible. I, I'm pretty sure they lost the rebounding battle by like 30 rebounds. Um, the Serbians got to the free throw line like 20 more times. And they just had nothing to stop these guys. And no matter the intensity, Serbians matched it. Played incredibly off of Jokic. Rebounded like I said incredibly well. They had a lot of tipped, tipped baskets off of misses. And yeah, they just dominated today. Um, while USA... Beats, what the hell was I doing when I was writing these down actually, what the hell, beats South Sudan, <laughs> what the hell, 1386, I guess, you know, I mixed it all up while I was writing it down and looking at it, so that's my bad, and I mean, it's horrible, horrible by me, but it is what it is, I guess, um, nonetheless, um, <laughs> Holy shit, I'm so embarrassed. Nonetheless, USA beat South Sudan 18386. Uh, Tatum started today, AD started today because of the matchups, of course, and beat against these uh, lengthy athletic uh, wings of South Sudan it didn't make much sense. While Tatum made ma way more sense, and AD has been probably the best big man in these Olympics for the US. Uh, while Bam obviously had the best game today. 
Uh, that makes sense. The matchups make sense. Uh, Tatum started, got a chance to play instead of Embiid here. Uh, wasn't great or anything, but uh, he did get a chance to play. And it's not about that, right? They essentially share the same role with Devin Booker. I mean, Tatum shares the same role with Devin Booker and Anthony Edwards, and they have just been better, right? And has been knocking down his shots. And Devin Booker has been absolutely sensational as a quote-unquote role player here, right? He's been knocked down, defend, defense really well, and his playmaking has been really good. As he has just been playing like an incredible team player. So Devin Booker continues to start, of course, and uh, Anthony Edwards continues to... I mean, be incredible offensively, so that's why Tatum wasn't getting minutes and probably will not be getting minutes if the matchup doesn't warrant it. Um, and Steph continues to struggle as Steve Kerr said they had to give, get him a go in, and I think he's just out of rhythm, right? He's been setting screens, he's been essentially playing the role player clay role that Steve employed clay upon uh, throughout these last seasons, but um, not, not much rhythm for Steph. That's all that is. And yeah, hashtag bench stuff. <laughs> uh, but South Sudan did fight. Uh, USA sometimes took, to pad took their uh, pedal of the gas. Gas of the pedal. What? Yeah, that's the saying. I'm completely off. Holy shit. That's, this is bad. Anyway, <laughs> uh, USA is just, I would say, too good. Like, nothing has given me a reason to be skeptical about this US team, KD continues to look incredible, uh, LeBron looks incredible, and I mean, as long as Bam and AD continue to play their way defensively, the defensive lineups are great, uh, the only defensive liability has been in a way Steph, but uh, I mean, I think he's gonna be alright. Now the last game they play is against Puerto Rico, that should be an easy game for them, and then they're of course into the quarters, and we'll see what happens there. Uh, and today's slide we have all women's game, Japan against Germany, I'm going Germany, even though it could be, I would say, uh, what is it, like one of those games where Germany really upset Belgium last time, right, and that they could have a letdown game today against Japan, but we'll see. Australia against Canada, I'm going Australia, because I mean, what I've seen from Canada women's team wasn't great. Uh, France against Nigeria, while I love the story of Nigeria, I think I'm gonna go France. And Belgium, US, I'm gonna go US, even to Belgium, of course, bounce back game for them. They'll be pumped up for this game against US, they played them close last time. Will be an intriguing matchup. And that's it. I'm sorry for a weird uh, shorter episode than usual for me, but uh, yeah, I'm completely off, so I'm just gonna do this. Olympic start in 30 minutes. Thank you all for listening, thank you all for watching. As always, be kind to yourself and to others, and tomorrow will be better. Tomorrow I'll be better, but hey, as long as you're alive, nothing else matters.